Thank you. Okay. So we are, uh, if you have found yourself here this morning, it's probably because you want to uh, be able to write papers well and get good grades here at Alaska Bible College. So uh, congratulations to you. You are already a step ahead uh, above those that are not here because you're going to know things that they will not know. Uh, and so uh, like I said, we do have people on the recording. We do have our people that will probably be listening to this or watching this in the recording or also those who are online right now. But uh, I wanna get, just kind of give a quick uh, overview or a quick uh, uh, introduction to this. First and foremost, for those of you who are brand new to Alaska Bible College are wondering, wow, this is amazing that they're giving like a workshop on how to write papers right before class starts. This is awesome. I mean, I wish every college did that. Okay, this is not normal for Alaska Bible College. Just wanted to let you know that. Uh, we are actually switching from MLA to Turabian, which is our style guides. By the way, if, you, if you're completely lost and you're like, I have no idea what he's even talking about. I'm talking about the format that you use or that you will use when you write your papers. All of your papers have to be have to style. They have to look the same. Uh, and I'll give you a couple reasons why. Why do our, all of our papers look the same? Why can't I just turn a paper in in 20 point comic sans, green and yellow with highlights and little butterflies and rainbows on it? Because it looks so pretty, that's why. No, uh, the first reason why we need to have a style guide is so that all papers are standardized. All papers have the, uh, be, if they meet the same standards, that means that when I say, I want you to write a 1200 word essay, or I want you to write a three page paper, then when you write a three page paper, your three page paper will be exactly the same length as someone else's three page paper. Or if you write 1,200 words and you write it out, it's going to be the same length of paper in terms of pages as everyone else's, right? So that's one, one reason. Another reason is it's a little bit for us professors because it's kind of jarring to see different formats or different uh, fonts or different things. Uh, and what we're grading is not how pretty you can make your paper, what we're grading is the content of your papers. We're sure we want to get at what you're saying, not how beautiful you can make your paper look. Okay, so that, those are a couple of just very quick reasons. Obviously, there are others. So then why the switch from MLA to Turabia? And one major reason is as we're uh, looking forward to Alaska, for Alaska Bible College, one of the things, maybe you've heard of some things we're looking at doing. Uh, one of the major uh, things that's kind of on the horizon. We're, we're still in development on it, but it's just, I, I want you guys to get excited about it because as we're looking forward to it, we're still several years down the road, but at some point in the near future, we're going to want to add a master's program. We're going to want, we're going to look forward to adding a seminary as a part of Alaska Bible College. So that as you finish your bachelor's degree, you can go on and earn a seminary degree or a master's degree here at Alaska Bible College. You say, well, aren't four years in the Bible enough? <laughs> Why do I need more than four years? Well, here's the deal. A bachelor's degree indicates that you have a working knowledge of things and you have a, uh, a, 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 a working knowledge means that you can work in that field and you have that working knowledge. Master's degree means as the name suggests, you have a mastery of that subject, which means that you are capable of teaching that subject. Or in a lot of churches, you can then, uh, a lot of churches, bigger churches especially, will be looking for that primary degree. So as we look forward to the future, uh, one of the things that to, to comport with other seminaries of like mind, uh, they use this other format, this it a little bit in a second here. Uh, MLA, if you are familiar with MLA, it's probably because you did MLA in high school, or perhaps you did MLA in junior college, or perhaps you did MLA at state college. You did MLA somewhere in some liberal arts field that really didn't pertain to anything in particular. That's the standard form 
for high schoolers, MLA, the uh, uh, Modern Language Association. <clears throat> and when they say modern language, they mean modern language. Uh, the MLA is considered in academia as the most loose uh, style guide that there is, which means that it's also the easiest to do. It's the easiest to, 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 to and just for reference, I brought the MLA eight. Here it is. It is oh, before the index. It is 127 pages long. Not a lot, right? In fact, this is actually even shorter. This is the MLA eight. This is the newest one. Uh, and it's basically like, eh, make sure there's a one inch margin around the outside, double space it, use a decent font and put your name in the page number at the top. And, you know, when you cite sor sources, just kind of throw some parentheses around the guy's name and that's, and you're good. That's MLA, right? <laughs> and I'm not kidding you. That is, you're like, I, I, I struggle with MLA. I'm sorry. This is the e this was the easy one, okay. This is the high school version, and it's gotten easier and easier and easier with every edition. And what they're trying to do it's like I said, it's the modern language association. They're relaxing standards, just like most of modern society is. Uh, in <clears throat> way back at the turn of the century, and when I say turn of the century, I'm old. I mean turn of the last century. All right, so we're talking 1800 to 1900, not 1900 to 2000. Uh, one of these days when we say turn of the century, we'll mean the turn of this last century, but uh, way back in, in, at the turn of the century, a lot of colleges were wanting to standardize things, and one of those colleges was Chicago University, or University of Chicago. All right, University of Chicago uh, wanted to be prestigious, and uh, I mean, Barack Obama went there for pity's sake. No, he didn't go there. He, he, he taught there. That's right. Uh, and so... Uh, 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 the head of their English department was a lady by the name of Kate Turabian. And Kate Turabian uh, headed up a committee to develop the Chicago Manual of Style. And the Chicago Manual of Style became standardized for not only uh, University of Chicago, but became, became uh, standardized throughout uh, various academic endeavors. And one of those academic endeavors that adopted was theology. So each field kind of has their own style guide. Uh, and uh, maybe you've heard of APA. Uh, I just finished up a dissertation. Uh, I, I, you know what, at some point I have to say I just finished up. It was in March, 2020. Uh, uh, and I, I did it in the area of leadership. Leadership is a subfield of psychology. Psychology is APA, which is the American Psychological Association. APA. Uh, and so, uh, and I believe uh, uh, Dave Lay is also, President, President Lay is also doing his. In the field of theology and philosophy, which means that if you ever want to be published in a theological journal, if you ever want to uh, move on to a seminary degree, which most of you, if you're in, in the uh, Bible or ministry, Bible and ministry program, uh, the, the, the next natural step for you would be to get a master's in, uh, in theology or ministry from some seminary. Uh, uh, and so you would use Turabian. So Kate Turabian, she actually passed away in 1987. Uh, and when I went to go look for, I, I was <laughs> sitting in here, there were a couple of guys sitting in here. And, uh, I was like, oh, I wanted to, you know, is she still alive? Did she, when did she pass away? I wanted to give you that little tidbit of information. Uh, Kate, uh, so I, I like just pulled up Kate Tarabian, and I kid you not. Oh no, hold on, hold on. Well, it just I, I went up to the top tab and it pulled down the screen. There we go. Hold on. Here we go. I kid you not, that image came up. That is not me. I don't know who that is, but he looks an awful lot like me. Like, huh? No, no, I know that's not me. So anyway, plus that's the eighth edition. So I don't even I don't even own a copy of the eighth edition. So we need an updated picture. There it is. Oh no, you missed it. Sorry. <laughs> Had your chance, buffed it. All right. 
but you can tell just by looking Kate Turabian, uh, of course now it's called the a manual, of st manual for writers of research papers, theses and dissertations, Chicago style for students and researchers, ninth edition. It's been updated uh, nine times. Let's see here, before the appendices begin, uh, 425 pages. So there you go. Uh, by the way, this is the condensed version. Uh, I just had Noel uh, order for uh, our library the full version of the Chicago Manual of Style, which is, I think, 1,500 pages. So it's very complex, but it's very well thought out. It's very purposeful. There's a reason for everything, even though it doesn't look like there's a reason for everything. Why am I doing it this way? It's probably because as the papers get longer and they get more complex, it, it maintains that style throughout if you do it a certain way at the beginning. Uh, what was it, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cote, we had a conversation and you were quoting, was it Aristotle? You said a, a, a full, there's a big one at the end. And uh, those of you who have done any kind of carpentry can attest to that. If you're a little bit off on this side of the room, you will be a whole lot off on the other side of the room. All right, so uh, this is K. Raven. By the way, uh, this is also this uh, manual style ninth edition. Uh, about the time that she passed away, uh, the the committee took over guys by the name of uh, Booth, Colum, Williams, Bizip, and Fitzgerald, uh, and the University of Chicago Press editorial staff uh, took over. Uh, and when they did, actually, they they were always working in conjunction with her personally, uh, but. Uh, uh, took over, uh, and they had actually written the same group, uh, Booth, Colin Williams, Bishop, and Fitzgerald, wrote a book called The Craft of Research. Now, what's fascinating is it doesn't matter what your dissertation is in, this is standard for everyone. This craft of research is known throughout the world. This is, uh, this is actually a, more, uh, a better seller than this one is. What they did was they took this book, which is the standard for research, and they condensed it. Actually, they didn't really condense it. They just put it together with Kate Turabian's style guide and put it in this book. So if you have this book, you also have this book, and you didn't know it. It's right there. All right. So I was, I was hoping to have the, the, the Chicago Manual so I could actually show you the Chicago Manual, but we actually just got it ordered on, uh, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, was it? Yeah. So with that introduction now out of the way, what is Turabia? What does it look like? How do I get to it? What, I mean, just give me the, just give me the deets. I don't need to know all of the, uh, uh, the background, right? So without further ado, the, 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 the school is uh, providing for you a template for Turabia which means that we've taken all of the, uh, the ancillary stuff out of the way for you. You don't have to open up a brand new Word document and start from scratch, uh, putting in one, you know, what, what the margins are and what the indents are and what the fonts are and all that type of stuff. There is a, a template available for you. And I'll show you, first of all, where to get, where to get it before I show you, start showing you what Turabian looks like. All right, so you're going to start out with your AK Bible uh, popular account. Log in. All right, and right up here at the very top, and if you didn't know this already, the files tab, okay, under the files tab, you'll see, uh, you will probably see as a student, you will only see uh, the uh, uh, student academic files and student financial worksheet, uh, but the student academic files, is where you want to go. And faculty, there's also the faculty academic files. This is also located there for you guys. So it's in the, it's the same thing in both. So you should have both of them. All right, you open that up and you'll see there the ABC Turabian template, D-O-T-X. D-O-T-X as compared to D-O-C-X. If you're, if you're familiar with Microsoft Word, D-O-C-X is the uh, 
uh, is the, uh, the file format for Microsoft Word document, but a DOTX is for, is for a Microsoft Office template. And you want to see the DOTX because when you open that, every time you open that document, instead of opening the template to change the template, what, you're gonna, what it'll do is it'll open as a brand new document with, that's untitled. And, it'll, and when you go to save it, it'll prompt you, save it as what? So every time you do so, you're not gonna be rewriting or overwriting the template. So you don't have to worry about, oh, did I save the template? It, it'll, it's automatically saved for you. So when you, once you download it, so click on there, it'll open it. Of course, it doesn't open in your browser. So you have to download it. So click download, it automatically downloads, open it up, opens up as Microsoft Word. A couple of things very quickly on this. <clears throat> Uh, because it is a word template, these are styles that are uh, unique to Microsoft Word. In order to use this particular template, you will need to have Microsoft Office or Microsoft Word. If you do not have a copy of Microsoft Word or Microsoft Office, you're in luck, or at least you're in the right place, because I'm going to show you how to get it. Very quickly, this is as simple as simple can be. You open up your web browser, you open up a new tab, and you type OFFICE.com. That's it, office.com, and hit enter. It will say, Do you want to try this new web browser from Microsoft? You say, uh, Go jump in a lake. And at the bottom there, you say, Sign in. All right? Every one of you. Can sign in now. What you can, what you may need to do is start an account. If you haven't started your account yet, you may have to come down and say, uh, 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 and say, start an account. And uh, no, no, what you're doing is you're going to log in with your akbible.edu email address. And by doing that, you can identify as your, yourself as a student or as a teacher, and that will give you free access through us to Microsoft Office for a free version of Microsoft Word, all right? You don't have to pay for Microsoft Word. So come in here, you grab sign in, and when it signs you in, it'll say, uh, do you want to enter the password? You say sign in, and when it says, do you want to stay signed in and don't show this again? Ignore that because that's a lie, because every time you log in, it will show that same thing every single time, no matter how many times you click. So just click yes. All right, this is this is good here. I'm going to move Allie around just a little bit here, so you can see more parts of my screen. All right, I'm I'm hoping you guys can see that. I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit if I can. All right, so I'm zooming in a little bit so you can see the buttons a little better. All right. Right there on the top right-hand corner, it says install Office. That's what you want to do. Do not try to use this word, this uh, uh, template with Office Online. Microsoft Office Online is a great little tool for opening an Office document, for viewing an Office document, for making small edits to a Microsoft Office document. It is not good for formatting a Microsoft Office document. By the way, for those of you who are familiar with and have been using uh, Google Docs, I'm sorry. This will not work with Google Docs. There is a Google Docs template. If you want to try it, you can try it. You, when you go in, you, you open up a, a new Google Docs document, click on new document and start as template. There's a little place that says, it, it says use a template, click that, use the template. There is an ABC Turabian uh, 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 template there, Google Docs. Click on that, open it up. It is formatted properly when you open it. The minute you start adding things to it, it goes haywire. So if you want, if you're like, I, I can't do any, I can't use anything. I got a Chromebook. I've got, you know, I, I literally cannot use anything else. Uh, I need to open this up. I need to write my paper in this. You can do so. Just understand, my wife had long hair at the beginning of the summer. 
And then she took a class and used Google Docs to create her Turabian do document. Three months of struggle. Yeah, just open it up and just use Microsoft Word. It's just that much easier, all right? Now, there is also, uh, uh, if you are a Mac user, you can try to use pages. Again, it's the same problem. As soon as you start, it looks good at the beginning, but as soon as you start, you have to kind of wrestle with it uh, in order to get it right, which is fine if you want to do it. Cote's uh, uh, got a pages, pages template. You can open that up, but if you want to try to wrestle with it, that's, that's not uh, you know, if you want to be that hard headed of a Mac user. Uh, What's that smack so it's easy? <laughs> okay. Uh <-huh>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, keep rolling, keep moving, move and move, move on, move on. So uh, uh, the only other one that works seamlessly is Open Office. I have this also as an Open Office document uh, template. If you want that, I can get it to you. I did not provide it because I didn't want any confusion. I, th I think the best way to do this is to say, this is the standard, here's how you get it, here's where you can get Microsoft Word, everybody's using the same thing. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to be dogmatic, I'm not gonna say you have to use this. I personally, I use OpenOffice for everything because I'm an open source guy, I don't like using Microsoft for anything if I can avoid it. Of course, here's my laptop using Microsoft Word on Microsoft Windows. Uh, all right, so, um, Okay, so that's uh, Microsoft Office. Click Install Office. It'll open up, and just click through and install Microsoft Office, and that'll give you a full version on your desktop or on your laptop of Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, uh, and uh, something else, I'm sure. Uh, I don't know if it's OneNote or anyway, there's something else that's involved there. All right, so that's Microsoft Word. Now to the document. Okay. When you open this up, you may need to click at the top, enable editing, because it's a template. Uh, you, you may not need to, it depends on how your, how your computer set up, how you configure Microsoft Word. Uh, you can click then enable editing and you are off to the races. Okay. So just let's walk, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through the document. I don't wanna insult your intelligence. I obviously, uh, you can, uh, uh, nope, nope, not that one. Uh, obviously, you can uh, read this as well as I can. Uh, hold on. Let's, there we go. Okay. Nope, I don't want that. I don't want, I want this to be page width. There we go. Okay. All right, but I, I but I want what I want to do is I want to point out a few things along the way. First of all, Turabian, unlike MLA, has a a uh, cover page, okay? That cover page is very simple. When I took this, uh, when I did Turabian back in college, we had this convoluted uh, page that was like uh, in partial re uh, fulfillment of the requirements for the course. You know, why am I typing all of it? Can I just put the name of the paper on there? Yes, you can just put the name of the paper there. Anything that you are to insert uh, has little brackets next to it. Uh, so insert title of the page, paper here. So you just, uh, triple click on that and you type in, um, uh, give me a title for a page for a paper. What's that? Turabian Workshop. That is the boringest title for a paper ever. Turabian Workshop. I, I would say, I would say the, uh, the perspectives of Turabian as presented in the workshop provided by Alaska Bible College on uh, 13 August 2021. <laughs> All right, so then your 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 uh, insert your student name. Uh, and that's your name, by the way. Uh, and then the course number and section and course title. That's the uh, you know BI uh, TH 3101. That's Doctrines One, uh, and that's really readily available on your uh, on your uh, syllabus or on Populi or whatever. Uh, and then the course title, of course, uh, write that out. And then the month date you're submitted. Uh, you can do different formats on this. I, I don't know if there's a specific, like it has to be month, 
uh, written out day, comma, year. I think that's how I always see it on, uh, on, uh, uh, on Turabian. I prefer the European method. Uh, I know that, and it's, it's, it, has become, it is becoming more standard in academia to use the European method, which, is more, uh, which actually makes more sense. And that is day, just the two numerals for day, uh, uh, and then the month written out, and then the year. So today would be 13 August, 2021. And the reason why I like that, first of all, is because it's in order of ascending uh, lengths of units, right? So days, months, and years, uh, as compared to the convoluted like months and then day and then or day, yeah, month and then day and then year. And it doesn't put two numbers together because the day number is separated from the year number by, a, by the month word. And because of that, you don't have to have a comma. So it's just day, month, year without commas. It's, it's cleaner, it's simpler. Uh, I prefer it. Uh, and, uh, and when you're saying it, typically you use the ordinal rather than numeral, right? So you say it's the 13th of August, okay? Uh, 13 August. Although you'll hear people say that. I was, I, that, that 13 August, okay? So there, there's that. All right, first page. Uh, there's a couple of things that are that are actually built into this template that are future proofing, which is that the first page ha is has no number on it, uh, but it is a numbered page. But it's a numbered page in the preface, and the preface to your paper is is in lowercase Roman numerals. So if you like go to the go to your first page. And you like, uh, and you like tab down to to bump down and have like, then a new page. It'll say Roman numeral lowercase Roman numeral two at five. So it's like I said, it's in there. It's in the format. It's in the document. But just so you know, if you accidentally tab down or something like that, how did I get a Roman numeral lowercase two here? All right. So that's that. All right. Um, then you begin with your first subheading each. Uh, subheading on this uh, on this document is formatted properly, uh, and I've actually named the subheading what that subheading is called. Okay, so introduction, which is the first level subheading. All right, so here we go. Uh, uh, the first page is. Uh, let me make sure I'm saying this correctly. Uh, your page numbers are just like in MLA, are in the top right hand corner. Uh, in, in, in sequence, but there's no last name there. Unlike uh, both MLA and, um, and APA, there is no running head. There's no, because uh, MLA has your last name as a running head. APA has this re ridiculous uh, running head that you actually put the title of the paper as a running head, but on the very first page, you have to, you have to type out running head and then type out the running head. Like it actually had like the words running head and then type out the running head on the first page. But then every subsequent page after that is <laughs> just the, could you not figure out that that was the running head just by me putting it anyway, that's APA. Um, all right, a couple of things very quickly. Uh, well, you know what, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll point those things out in, in, in a minute. I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. Um, before I keep moving, we've been at this for a half hour. Any questions? Okay. Deafening silence. Wonderful. Which means one of two things. Either I've explained it all so well that you have no more, no further questions because it's been explained so thoroughly, or I have confused you all so much that you are dumbfounded and have no idea even where to start asking. <laughs> Mike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And last time when you think, and you know that the last time. Hmm. I think I remember my email. Right. Did you did you sign did you go to sign up for or did you go log in as? Okay. <clears throat> well we may have to uh 
uh, see me after or see Cote after we, both, both of us can get you logged in. Okay. Uh, Donna, did you have a. Okay. Okay, yeah, when you, you, that's why you have to have to open it up in Microsoft Word. If you're just looking at it like in a in a preview or something like that, it may be all messed up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, keep going here then. All right. Um, the the neat thing about this template, uh, if, if you've opened this template or if you've been looking at this template uh, at all, uh, this template is actually also a tutorial. Every single thing that you need to know about Turabian is actually in the template itself. Uh, and so, uh, you know, as you read through here, since most begin, beginning students will have difficulty learning how to write papers and format papers correctly using the ninth edition of Kate Turabian's uh, manual of writers for uh, of research papers, this sample paper can be used as a template as well as a guide for correct formatting. Some reflective assignments may allow first and second person writing styles. Third person narrative style must be used in research papers. As you can tell, this is written in, uh, in uh, third person. All right. uh, notice that the first time Turabian's name is written in this paper, her full name is given. That's standard. The other person's full name. But the second and subsequent uses, only her last name is used. So when you reference someone, you want to say, Charles C. Ryrie, and then after that, just Ryrie. Okay. Uh, the first page of the paper is to be a title page with the title page, uh, uh, title of the paper written about a third of the way down the page, and the name of the student, uh, the paper, the name of the course, the date of the paper is uh, submitted, written toward the bottom third of the page. The text of the title page, so you see, it's like actually descriptive of the uh, the the the, uh, the the title page. Okay, the second page of the document is the first page of written text and is to be numbered in the top right hand corner, starting with page one, page Roman numeral one, or not, no, not, excuse me, Arabic numeral one. Uh, the text of the document is to be double spaced throughout, uh, except for block quotes. Turabian states how to format a block quote. Uh, uh, and then you can see the quote there, and that is formatted as a block quote should. Just fixed this this morning. Uh, I had a tab in at the beginning of the quote, uh, and we we determined no, <clears throat> it's better to just have the block quote uh, uh, completely left justified all the way, uh, including the first line. <clears throat> except if this this isn't in here. Except if this block quote begins a paragraph where what you're writing. So if you, if you open up, if you're reading something, you're like, oh, I really want to block quote that, okay? And it's the beginning of a paragraph. And so in the, in the, uh, in the original document, it's indented. You can do that, or you can uh, 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 demonstrate that by just coming to the first thing here. And Kote, is it three spaces or five? You've been doing three? It's just Just a couple of spaces. You, you're actually not uh, don't hit the tab button. Don't intent over. Just tab it, or just uh, hit a couple of spaces there. To just all you're doing is indicating that this is the beginning of the paragraph uh, in the source document. Okay, that's all you're doing. Okay, but you'll also notice right away that I've already sources. Actually, I've only quoted one source, and that is Kate L. Turabian, Annual for Writers of Research Papers Thesis and uh, Dissertations, ninth, ninth edition. Revised uh, by Wayne C. Booth at Al, uh, Chicago, Illinois, University of Chicago Press, 2018. That is a proper citation for a book. Okay. And, uh, and one of the things I like about this this particular one is it gives you like all the little. Uh, ooh, there's it's got a different edition and it's the, it's got different editors and all of that. Uh, so that's how that should be done. Now, the next time that you quote that exact same thing 
uh, or uh, if you quote that exact same thing, or if you reference that exact same thing in the next, uh, uh, as the next quote, you do this word ibid. Now, I'm going to ask, and this is a trivia question for the faculty. Maybe Cote knows it. Ali is online. She is our English professor, uh, English comp professor. Uh, perhaps the, uh, uh, any of us doing our, does anybody know what the word ibid means? What does the word ibid mean? I do. Okay, okay. Is, it, is it Latin? Is that what it is? Okay. Yeah, it's Latin. Is it short for something? Beatum. Ibidum. Is yep. that right? Is it it's ibidum? close. Okay. Yeah. And we just do ibid. Because there is a period at the end of ibid indicating that it is an abbreviation. So ibid. There you go. Uh, Professor Bates, thank you very much. That's uh, you get the gold star for today. All right. Uh, so here's the deal. And I, I just noticed this that the uh, because the first reference to this book is actually just a reference to the book itself. There is a page number because I'm not referencing a specific page of that book. The page number, so when you do IBID, you always still have to indicate the page number. And this is a difference between MLA and, and, and Turabian. In MLA, you only needed the page number if you directly quoted. If you're just referencing that work or something from that work, you just put the name of the author or the or the or whatever. In Turabian, you put the page number, whether you've directly quoted or you're simply alluding to something. Okay, so even if you don't direct quote, you still need the page number from where that idea came from in that source. Uh, right? So unfortunately, all right, <laughs> I was over there. Uh, unfortunately, the writer of the book of Hebrews would not be able to write in Turabian. You know, <laughs> it says somewhere that, I, rather, Book of Hebrews is my kind of person. I have to say, it says somewhere that there. I don't know how many times does, does the rather Book of Hebrews say that. It's like referencing the Old Testament, whereas you're like, you know, Paul is like Isaiah says, and then David says, and as the prophet Jeremiah says, you know, and and he's like referencing and and specifically like the. This is one of the reasons, by the way, New Testament survey spring semester. Uh, <laughs> you know that Paul didn't write. Because why, why, why Paul didn't write the book of Hebrews? Because Paul is very specific as to where he gets stuff. Uh, the writer of the book of Hebrews is like, uh, somewhere in the Old Testament it says, President Sam. All right. Uh, so, any questions moving, moving forward on? on uh, uh, we'll see a couple more of these uh, uh, footnotes throughout the document. Yeah. Mm hmm. No. Right. Right. No, no, that's a good, great question. Great question. So Ibid is just for an immediately following reference. If you reference this, and then the very next reference is the same, just write the Ibid and the page number. If you cite a different source in between, right, then you have to do something a little different. I'll, it, it's also been here, and I'll show you in a, in a second how to, how to do that. Okay. Also, you cannot start a page with Ibid. Right? You can't start a page with Ibid, which means that it's immediately referenced in that page. Which means that if you go back and you and you're the type of writer like me, and you're going back and editing things, and you're like, oh, I don't like that paragraph there. I want to put that paragraph at the beginning. I want to put this paragraph that was at the end. I want to put it at the beginning things you start moving stuff around understand that you have to then go back through and make sure that ibid is not at the top of the page and that and that it's if immediately following that which it's supposed to uh, uh, be referencing okay i told you this is a little complicated yeah see above see see immediately above yeah mm -hmm. Or if there's nothing above it because it's on the second page. Okay, okay so 
Uh, do, 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 do. All right, a little bit of note about the foot. Uh, the uh, You'll notice that the, fo uh, the footnotes are also in Times New Roman, but they are in 10 point font as compared to 12 point font. And they are uh, single spaced uh, within the, within the uh, uh, footnote, but there is a double space or there's, a, there's an additional space between the footnotes, okay? And they are tabbed in, right? And so it's a tab in, and then you have the, the superscript uh, number from the, from, the, uh, from the thing. Oh, by the way, if you want to add a footnote, very simple, okay? Let's say I wanna add a footnote here to Alaska Bible College, okay? I just come up here to the top and I put insert, right? And I have to remember how Microsoft, oh, it, Ali's, co Ali's covering it up here. That's why, is it? Hold on, hold on. You said two thirds of the way over. There's header, footer, page number, hold on. All right, somebody help me out here. I'm so used to uh, uh, open office. Oh, references, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, yes, it's under the, when I was using, when I, start, when I started Microsoft Office, it was before the ribbons. And so they, when, when, they, when Microsoft Office 2007 introduced the ribbons, I was like, I'm out, I can't do it. This is too much for me. So I went to, that's when I went to open office and I've never really learned the ribbons. <laughs> All right, so under references, that's where all of this is. So you can add, uh, right here it says AB1, right in big letters, okay? Uh, and it says uh, insert footnote. So when you click insert footnote, it immediately inserts the footnote right in the proper place. It is formatted properly. Uh, and all you have to do is type uh, the, Yep. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so uh, um I want to say I want to I want to just point something out here. Oh wait, no, that needs to be a comma. Hold on, a comma there. Yes, I do. There we go. Okay, so uh, when you're inserting this, uh, oh, I was going to say something and then I've completely forgot. Uh, nope, lost it. It's gone. I just cited. Yes, I did. I just cited my own. I this is this is citation inception. This is cite. Citation inception, cite inception, <laughs> where to, I'm re referencing this paper inside of this paper. <laughs> cite inception. Uh, so, okay, hold on. Something I was going to speak with this. Oh, uh, just a quick note. Uh, Arabian. Uh, uh, and, and you'll see this as we get a little further in, uh, uh, when you cite a uh, book or, or whatever, it expects the, the, uh, the, the name of the publisher, but also the location of that, of that publisher. What's odd is, I don't know why this is, but for reason, there are a lot of publishers that are like, I don't know, in some bunker in Nebraska somewhere with an undisclosed address. Like, why can't I find the location of this publisher? Uh, typically, you just go to Google and just like Google that publisher because a lot of times it's just not even in, uh, in the uh, citation stuff that uh, you're looking for. Uh, by the way, a lot of modern books, okay? A lot of modern books you will have, and I, I'm gonna say this and then it's gonna call me a liar. 
if I'm not mistaken, a lot of modern books will actually have a uh, either MLA or Turabian's uh, uh, not all of them, but there are some that do. Um, but when you do the location, and this is something again, this is, it seems like it's getting nitpicky, but as you as you get longer, as you're, as you're doing more and more, in order to be uh, uh, systematic, it is name of the city, comma, and then postal uh, abbreviation for the, for the state. Okay. Don't write the name of the state out. Don't use the old uh, 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 abbreviation of like um, uh, ILL for Illinois or yeah, uh, right, yeah, M-I-S-S for Mississippi. It's, it's M. M S for Mississippi, right? Uh, M S or I L or A K, uh, rather than the longer one. All right. Because um, sometimes uh, when we, I'll show you Zotero here in a little bit, and sometimes when uh, Zotero imports it from uh, from Amazon, it has for whatever reason it's like uh, Chicago I L L. Like man, it hasn't gone by Chicago I L L for twenty years, thirty years. I was a kid when they changed the the, the uh, abbreviations for the states. You guys don't even know that there are different abbreviations for the states. <laughs> I I had to memorize those when I was in fourth grade. Yes. If there is like not a date, you uh, I believe Trayvon also does this with the lowercase n period, lowercase d period for no date. Uh, you can also do no page uh, or you know NP. Do not sit there and do that to every single one of them. Nope, no page down that one. That, that's legitimately that there is no page. Not that, not that, nope, didn't want to bother looking that up. <laughs> Okay. All right. And did you notice that I just legitimately just uh, uh, made up a uh, a publishing house right here at Alaska Bible College, ABC Press? Yeah. Yeah, baby. All right. All right. Don't make up presses. Um, I am actually going to delete some of this stuff, and the reason why uh, is because. Uh, there's things on this that I'm going to I'm going to be showing you later in the document, and I don't want it to get uh, messed up down later in the document. Okay. All right. So let's scroll down a little further here. Here's page uh, two. Okay. Uh, tells you a little bit more about the uh, uh, footnote uh, and how to do that. Uh, in the course English Composition One, students learn the proper formatting of research papers. You'll see down here the uh, um, oh, why is that four? Oh, there it is. Uh, notice the comma was placed inside the quotation marks when a course title, uh, uh, when the course title English Composition One was written. Uh, anytime you do quotation marks in MLA, uh, excuse me, in Turabian, it's going to take me a little bit to, to remember to say that. Anytime you use quotation marks, here's the rule of thumb. If it is a, uh, mark uh, either as or a breathing mark as, such as a period or a comma or an exclamation point or a quote or, or a question mark it always goes inside the quota quotation mark if it's that uh, if it's something like that if it's something else it can go outside of the quotation mark. so if it's a comma or a period or a question mark or an exclamation point it goes in okay all right Hey, Mr. Olson. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to clear up a couple things on the IBID. Um, yes, they're actually do. transitioning from the eighth version to the ninth version. Um, they're transitioning away from using it altogether. Altogether. Uh, yeah. That's, that's smart. I, I, I wish they had done that earlier. Um, so instead yeah. of doing instead of doing on the second one, um, the IBID, you would do the author's last name, the title of the resource, and then the page number. 
Right. That's and then if you're citing it a third time, you just go to last name and then page number. Okay. So, so I'm going to scroll all the way down here to the bottom of that page, and you'll notice Terabia Manual uh, for Writers, nine three ninety three. That's how you would do it in any other paper. Um, As for me, if if you're turning papers in for me, if you don't use IBIT at all. And you just every subsequent one is just last name, title of the book, and page number for each one. That's fine. I'm okay with that. But check with your professor. Uh, they may be more like, no, you got to use the IBID. Uh, but they are. It sounds like what they're wanting to do is transition away from that. Uh, and maybe that is ninth edition. I didn't see that in there. Uh, in fact, I thought I'd seen some IBIDs in there, but. Uh, it says it's up to our discretion. It's um, up to our discretion. To so, it, but they're uh, trying to lean away from it. Yeah. So, so use it. Best rule of thumb is just do the last name, uh, title of the book, page number. Uh, you can just do last name of the author and page number on on subsequent ones after that. Uh, but if that source is being or, or if that author has more than one source. Um, you need to always indicate the, pay, the, the, the title of the book. Okay, so again, best rule of thumb, last name, title of the book, page. Um, and that's okay. All right. Okay, where are we at here? More stuff about headings, which you can read there for yourself. I'm not going to... Uh, Some stuff about uh, writing out numbers. Uh, numbers, uh, any number used in the text that is under 100 and any whole number of hundreds should be spelled completely within the body of the paper, 100, 200, et cetera. Generally, if the number can be written with two words, it should be spelled completely. That's kind of the rule of thumb. If it can, if it can be one or two words, spell it out completely, okay? Uh, for numbers written with more than two words, like 108, don't write that out completely. Just write 108 or 210. Uh, the numerals should be used. However, one should never mix the styles. If any number used within the uh, must be written with numerals, then all should be written in numerals. So if you have a sequence of numbers, you know, 5, 16, 38, 92, 108, 210, then all of those need to be numerals. Not at all confusing. <clears throat> there is an note when writing percentages, right? 98% or 100% and so forth, always using the numeral, but writing out the word. Uh, there is also a, uh, a caveat to that as well, because when you are doing num numbers, note, always use the numeral. Okay. Don't uh, it, like if you're making a if you're writing out a footnote because footnotes can be used not just for citing sources. Footnotes can be used if you're just adding details to something or adding information. But never use uh, never write out uh, 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 write out um, numbers in a footnote. Okay. All right. Uh, some more stuff about the subheadings and subheadings and subheadings and basically that's just subheading stuff. Uh, uh, but. Does anybody know what the, well, maybe I'll throw this out there as a question. Maybe I'll just throw it out as a statement. You know what? I'm just going to throw it out as a statement. The number of sentences that you need in order to have a paragraph is three. Okay. Two sentences does not equal a paragraph. One sentence absolutely doesn't equal a paragraph unless your name is the Apostle Paul. Then, it's <laughs> then, it's in, then one sentence equals an entire chapter. But since you are not called of God from birth to be an apostle to the Gentiles, uh, you get to use three sentences in a paragraph. Grammarly doesn't like Paul, and that's true. That's true. Import, import uh, direct quotes from scripture into Populi and see what happens. Or uh, into but Grammarly and see what happens. Um, by the way, that's actually, that actually says more about the, uh, the translation than it does about Paul. Um, if it's translated properly in proper English, it's not a problem. All right. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm trying my best, all right? 
<laughs> All right. Any more questions? I'm I'm just kind of scrolling through this because most of this has to do with um um yeah. No, no, that's in a sequence. It's only if it's in a sequence. Yeah. Don't like go one written out as a word and then 13 written out as a word, comma, uh, 108. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's in a sequence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see here. So th three sentences and a paragraph that way. Uh, and so when you have a heading, if you're putting headings in, Every heading, and this is again, maybe they're transitioning away from this. I don't care if they're transitioning away from this. This is just the way I want to. Uh, and I've consulted with a number of our experts here. There needs to be text under every heading. So you don't have like heading one, subheading two, subheading three, or sub subheading three. It's heading one, give me an introductory paragraph before you then put subheading uh, one underneath that. Okay. There, so there, so there, in other words, you're not going to ever have a place where you're going to have a uh, subsection heading number three and then under and directly underneath that uh, second subheading uh, right underneath that. There needs to be text. There needs to be a paragraph under that. And the best, easiest way to do that is just to make that uh, a, an introductory paragraph to that subheading or to that, uh, that uh, part, of the part of the paper that you're doing. Okay. Say, well, how do you do that in three sentences? Oh, just tell me what you're going to. This is standard uh, uh, speech, standard paper writing. Tell me what you're going to tell me. Tell me what you told me. All right? Introduction, body, conclusion. Tell me what you're going to tell me. Tell me, and then tell me what you told me. You can do that in smaller chunks, even under your subheading. So if you have, you're going to do that in the paper itself with an introduction, body, and conclusion. But then each subheading can have its own little and this subheading we're going to talk about this okay. and then uh with that yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> no you don't really need any no no it de it'll depend on the paper the these are in there just for your uh those are right ones you can get there but if you're if you're writing a paper and it's just a two-page essay or something like that just Start typing. You don't need headings or subheadings or anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Here's here are here are, and yeah. Basically, is here are the topics you need to cover in this paper. Those are your major headings. Right. And again, I, I I don't want to uh, uh, go past anything here. Um, see here all right examples of citing the bible examples of citing the bible many students struggle with proper formatting and citing the bible when citing biblical passages there are some general guidelines to follow that are important it is not necessary to write out full citations of verses or paragraphs from the bible since your readers can easily find the cited references okay they have a bible next to them or they can find a Bible, or they can look it up. Uh, citations are written out fully when the author needs to make a specific observation, such as when he or she chooses to follow Luke's example and his message to Theophilus, so that you may know the exact truth about the things you have been taught. Nice. Uh, and that, that's a direct quote, you because you're looking at very specific words that that person in other words, if you're looking at the words, direct quote. If you're looking at the ideas, don't direct quote. I'll repeat that because that's not just the Bible. That's for anything you're citing. If you're citing the, if you're if you're referencing the words, use direct quotes. If you're referencing the idea, don't use direct quotes. Okay? Just just allude to it. Just you put it in your own words and then cite the reference. That's all you need to do. If you're, if, but if you're, if you're, if you're honing down to the exact words that that person is using, and you're handling those exact words, that's when you use a direct quote. Okay. 
All right, notice a footnote below the, that only a single footnote is needed when identifying the Bible version. Recites from only one translation. MLA. There, uh, this is something they'll want to have probably in almost every paper that you have. A footnote that reads something like this. Un unless otherwise noted, all biblical passages referenced in this uh, are in, and then put the version. English Standard Version is particularly used here. Uh, and use the site, uh, use your publication data for that particular English translation that you're using. Okay. And that's the standard uh, 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 one for ESV. Uh, this information is not then included in the bibliography. You don't have to write that sentence. That's just additional information for you. Okay. <laughs> I'm just letting the teacher know I'm not putting this in the bibliography. <laughs> All right. Okay. Uh, yes. We're at the in the Wheaton, Illinois semicolon crossway. Yes. Oh, you know what? That should probably, that should be a comma there. Good call. This is what happens when you when you like re review a paper in front of I don't know a hundred people. <laughs> Librarians and English teachers. <laughs> and, now, and now I do feel called out. But guess what? I'm not changing the template again. <laughs> so you'll just have to deal with the back. Was there another one? Did you have a? Okay. All right. All. Uh, let's see here. All of the following biblical references are given the text uh, uh, in the text of the paper, not in the footnotes, unless content. Uh, in the footnote requires biblical references. All right. Uh, so every other passage you re re reference after that, you can just do um, uh, the, the name of the book, chapter and verse. Okay. Just name the book, chapter and verse. I prefer the name of the book written out rather than abbreviated because there is no standard abbreviation for Bible books. People have tried and tried and tried and tried to come up with some standard abbreviation for the books of the Bible, books of the Bible, and I don't know that anyone has ever really been successful at it, uh, or at least standardizing. So just write out the name of the book of the Bible, and for those of you who want to pad the runtime on your papers, uh, writing out First Corinthians as compared to one Cor uh, will help just get a couple more letters in there, right? Okay. Yeah. Now we're talking. Now we're getting some helpful information here. Keep going. I keep rolling on that. <laughs> all right <laughs> uh but just the just the references after that uh okay. if multiple translations or versions of the bible are cited then one footnote for each new version is necessary using a system of abbreviations in the text but only within the parentheses so in other words after that you can if you're not using just the esv like if you're saying uh, well, this in the ESV says it this way, but in the NIV, it says it this way, right? You're actually referring specifically to the various translations. That's when you need to say, okay, this is ESV, this is NIV. But after that, again, the same thing, you don't need a footnote. All you need is the verse reference uh, and comma uh, translation abbreviation, NIV, uh, NAS, NKJV, whatever, okay? The writing is simplified by choosing and citing one version only, unless you are specifically pointing out the differences between translations, please just use one translation of the Bible. All right, because if, 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 you're, if you're trying to get to what does the Bible say, just, just stick with one translation. Unless your paper, unless the, the purpose of your paper or the purpose of your point is made by comparing or contrasting different translations, that's when it's appropriate to use different translations. Okay. Uh, unless you're one of those that, uh, you know, yeah, but I like it the way this, this one says it best, or this one says it best. That's fine for a sermon. Uh, for a paper, you're, you know, that's, that's uh, uh, or whatever. Again, unless you're, unless you're specifically like looking at the way that that was translated differently in that, in that passage. Okay. Oh, let's see here. The actual text of a paper follow, uh, follow proper grammatical and style requirements. There are some 
correct examples of how to cite references or allusions from the Bible, Luke wrote to Theophilus in verse 4 of his first chapter so that his patron would have a more exact understanding of the details of the salvation of also the Gentiles. Notice when I'm just referring to the passage in my uh, in my in the text of my paper, I'm referring to that passage. Uh, I speak of it that way. Okay, the first chapter of for the the uh, verse four. Right, you can write all that out, but you're not going to do that every single time. That's not because that's not how you're going to do that. It's like uh, in the third chapter of Paul's second epistle to the Corinthian church that is located in Corinth on the archipelago of, on the isthmus of, uh, of Achaia. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, anyway, well, I'm just giving you guys all sorts of great ideas about how to pad your runtime here. All right, Luke claims that he wrote his gospel, quote, in consecutive order after having, quote, investigated everything carefully from the beginning. Then you put Luke, one three, right? Did you notice that where it's two quotes or that are separate or they're they're uh, they're separated? You don't put the reference until after the second one because it's in the same verse. Okay, uh, in verse one of chapter one, uh, Luke seems to be aware of previous gospel accounts. Not in uh, one two. Notice that Luke one two, he claims that he has in, uh, information for my witnesses. Note that. In the previous example, it is permitted to use standard biblical references like Luke 1 2 with a sentence if it is introduced as a biblical reference rather than as part of the text. Mm -hmm. You can, you can, that, that would be appropriate where you just have, like, let's say that first quote in consecutive order was from one, two, uh, and then the second quote uh, if it, and investigated everything carefully from the beginning. If it doesn't, if it's in order to not break the, 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 the sentence, then yeah, put it afterward. And then what you would do is then loop one, two, and three. Yeah. Yep. No, that's great. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Again, you, you don't want to break the flow of the, of your sentence with a bunch of parentheses. That's actually really what Turabian tries to do is, whereas MLA is like broken and APA are both broken up with a bunch of parentheses, like in the middle of sentences. Uh, it try, That's why it tr throws everything down to the footnotes so that it, uh, it doesn't disrupt the flow of what you're trying to say, okay? All right, we've been going at this for a little over an hour. Uh, let's take a quick break, uh, potty break, coffee break, um, and we'll come back and, and talk a little bit more because um, we, we still need to cover how to get to Zotero uh, and what to use for that, uh, how to get that and all that. Uh, yeah, 10, uh, 1030 is fine. 1030 is fine. That'll give you, give you a nice long break. So it's it's just how you're how you're introducing it. Just like in the, at the very beginning, it was uh, Kate uh, Kate Arabian says, and it's it's like written out as uh, whereas subsequently it's just her last name. It's kind of the same way. Where like the first time you're referencing it is like in first in the chapter one of Luke, it says this. Right, but then subsequently it's like the point two. Right, uh, okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Recording. All right. So uh, let's continue on now. I want to. Uh, uh, thank you, Abigail, for uh, for uh, walking me through this. Uh, where I sent you last time for Microsoft Word was the wrong place. So those of you who are trying to do it by, as we were sitting here working through it, uh, you're probably getting some kind of, of saying statement saying that you can't do that here. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> so no, you can't do that here. Uh, instead, you needed to go somewhere else to do it. Right, that's that's one of those uh, 
you can't get there from here. You have to go somewhere else to start. But if I go somewhere else to start, I've started here to get to that other place. To, so I did still start here anyway. Uh, uh, I, I don't know why in that like message, it didn't say you should go here and with, with like, with, with the right place. It just was like, maybe you should sign up for a new Outlook account. No. All right, so this is the correct place. Uh, if you just Google uh, uh, Microsoft Office for students, this should pop up. It'll be one of the first uh, couple of, of links. Uh, I can provide this link uh, in an email uh, so that you're, you know, you're not uh, 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 just searching all over Google for it. But it is Microsoft.com, uh, and it's uh, it's actually convoluted. I don't know why. Uh, slash en dot uh, dash us that's just saying that it's the language and slash education slash product slash office again i can send it to you or like i said just google office for students and it should be one of the first two uh to pop up eventually uh, essentially you're going to get no i don't want to do a survey no i don't want to chat with the specialist what in the world anyway uh, this is actually the page you want to get to, where it says Office 365 Education at the top. Okay, You get to Office 365 Education, and there uh, it says get started with an Office 365 for free, uh, and then enter your school email address. Make sure that when you type in your school email address that it is your username at akbible.edu. Okay? Uh, uh, that's one of the easiest things to get uh, to, to get off there, uh, but it's, it's uh, at akbible.edu. Uh, and as soon as you do that, it will register you with our account at AK Bible. Uh, and so, uh, and it'll get you directly to where you need to go. Okay. Any questions about getting Microsoft Office now that we have a link, right? The Template, just got a couple of things I wanna uh, finish up with here. Um, one of the things that uh, that uh, uh, Turabian hates, just like I hate, uh, is, well, I should say it this way, I hate widows and orphans. No, as the Bible very specifically tells us that we are to care for and love widows and orphans. But we're not talking about widows and orphans as in people, but widows and orphans as in lines on a page. So. Uh, in, in, in uh, what's that? In publishing, well, in publishing, literally, they're called widows and orphans. And a, a widow is when you have a, a a a a line that kicks down to the wrong to to the next page, and it's just one line at the top of the page. Okay, that's a a widow, or a, that's an orphan. That's a it's the bottom of the the last line of your paragraph got kicked down to the next page. And it's just a, a an orphaned line sitting there asking, please, sir, may I have some more, right? Some of you caught that literary reference. Thank you. Thank you. Not all my memes are, not all of my memes are pop culture. Some of them can be, uh, not all of them are punny. Oh yeah, well, some of them are punny. All right. So, uh, uh, so with that, you'll notice uh, that there's always at least two lines at the top. Uh, so even at the very end of your uh, of your uh, 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 paper, uh, you get to the end of your paper and you have like one line left over. Just do something to write a little more. To get down to the next line. Actually, what what this will actually do, uh, it will. Uh, in fact, there's a there's a up here a little further, uh, there's a, a heading at the top of a page, here it is. And you'll notice at the bottom of page four on the template, there's actually like this big space at the bottom. That's because the heading, all right, there's, it's, the next page starts with a heading. And because the next page starts with a heading, and if I had just put that heading up there, that would have been a widow. It's a, it's a heading that has each word, right? It has nothing else. It's just sitting there all by itself with nothing else 
to support it, right? Which is why we need to take care of that widow by putting it with other people uh, anyway. And we, then we can go into a uh, exposition of, uh, of uh, is it Titus that talks about the care of widows? Yeah, all right. <laughs> that sounded like a, yeah, it does. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know how that was a downer, but. <laughs> Uh, that's the, 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 the main text of it. You can, uh, uh, again, it's the, the beauty of this document is that it's not only a tutorial walking you through some of the, uh, some of those uh, beefier things. All right, let's get down to the bibliography then. This is a very short bibliography because I only referenced two things in the Bible, uh, and you'll see there the two uh, references there. Uh, you'll also notice there is a different format. So, uh, and it also has a, uh, a, a bibliography format. Notice uh, in MLA, it was a works cited page. In, ML, uh, in Turabian, it is a bibliography. Uh, technically, the difference between the two is that MLA is only a repository for the works that have been cited in the pa paper, hence the works cited. A bibliography technically is different in that these are the works that were that were uh, that were used when researching this paper, which means you may have something in your bibliography that you didn't actually cite in your paper. Okay, so there is a possibility that you have works in your bibliography that aren't cited. All right, so that that's just the technical difference between the two. All right, so again, you can see the uh, the way that the that it's there. Okay, um, now, how do I cite those references? I mean, every single thing has a different way of citing it. Uh, one of the different key differences is 425 pages as compared to 127 pages. Turabian is very specific as to how you cite things. MLA 8 is like, eh, kind of, it's got a, the, the name of the author first and the title next, and it's got uh, this thing next. And it's like, here's how you do that. You just make sure the title's in, in, in uh, italics. Make sure it's a comma in, or a period here and a comma there. Uh, but Turabian is very specific about every different type of medium that you might be citing article it's one thing if it's a book it's another thing it's a website it's another thing all right so to make that simple for you i'm going to introduce you to a piece of software that i'm going to highly recommend that you download and use it's called zotero zotero Z, Z o t e r o zotero so all right let's go hold on and come up here and you locate it at zotero.org. Z O T E R O dot org. O R G. Okay. When you get to zotero.org, the very first thing it will do is tell you to download it. All right. This is a piece of software that you would need to actually download and install on your computer. It's not something you can just access the web, web page, it's not something that's online. There's not, I don't believe there's like an app for your phone or anything. It's just, a, you can install on a computer. It is cross-platform. It works on Macs, uh, Windows, and Linux, which is why I'm okay with it, All right? But you go to download, click download, and it will automatically notice what kind of, what kind of computer you're using. If you're using a Mac, it'll say, oh, you're using a Mac. Here's how you install it on a Mac. If you're on a Windows machine, uh, it will automatically take you, here is your uh, platform, download it here. So big blue button, Zotero 5.0 for Windows, click download. When you click download, it will download the, the e, .exe file on your Windows machine or whatever that is for Mac. I actually don't know how to install apps on a Mac. You may have to see Professor Cote later to install uh, apps on a Mac. Uh, but click download and then click install and go through the uh, click through the, the, the process to install. You can also log in to Zotero, and I highly recommend that you that you create a free account with them. 
uh, use your AK Bible email address. And the reason why you should do that is because then when you install Zotero on a different device, let's say you have a laptop and you have a desktop computer, or you have some other computer that you might be using, like, at, at, you know, hey, I'm going to be home for the holidays and I've got my desktop at home or my parents' desktop at home or I've got my laptop or whatever it is. If you have multiple devices, then <clears throat> if you log in, then you can sync Zotero on those different devices. So if you add a book to Zotero on your laptop, when you open it up on your desktop, that book will be there once you synced. Okay, so I, I again, I highly recommend you do that. The next thing that you'll need to do, and again, this will only work if you're using a uh, the most powerful, free, fast browser available, that is Chrome. If you're using Safari, I'm sorry. If you're using uh, if you're using uh, Microsoft Edge, why? Okay, if you're using Firefox, you are a, I just read this just this last week. If you're using Firefox, you are a part, you are a member of a dying breed. <laughs> it is, Firefox is going away and it is going, and it is going away fast. But Chrome is available on any uh, uh, platform you have. You can use, you can even use Chrome on a, on a Mac machine. Uh, but the connector for, for Zotero only works in Chrome. There was at one point a, uh, a connector for, uh, for Firefox. If you click down here, Zotero connector for other browsers, you will find that there is one for Firefox. Oh, look at that. There's a, oh, there's a Safari. There's a Safari connector. I, what's funny is, is that says Safari connector, but I'm pretty sure, isn't that the logo for Netscape? Is that the Safari logo? Oh, okay. I mean, I, I guess you could use Netscape. It'd be about the same as using Safari. Anyway, so <laughs> anyway, keep, just keep moving, just keep moving. So install, install the connector for whatever browser that you're using. Right. Uh, I highly recommend you, you use Chrome. And the reason why I highly recommend you use Chrome is because by using Chrome, you can log into Chrome using your AK Bible uh, email. Uh, and, and because it is a Gmail account, it is a, a Google account, when you go up to the top here, you'll notice that I'm actually signed in as, uh, here you go. Oh, All right. sorry, Jessica, I've got to move you here you'll notice that I'm actually logged into my Chrome window as, AK, as, as B. Olson at AK Bible. And the reason why I do that is because I can now immediately log into Gmail, Calendar, uh, YouTube, um, all uh, uh, Google Drive, Google Docs, all of those apps that you have available to you are automatically logged in uh, through your Chrome browser that way. Okay. Because uh, AK, because Alaska Bible College uses Google uh, as a cross-platform uh, uh, system for education. One stop shop, uh, and but you know, you do you. All right. So, but you do need both of these. You need both the 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 the, the software itself, uh, Zotero, and the connector. And the reason why the connector is important is because you're actually going to use that connector to import. Uh, uh, the references that you can use. So I'm going to actually, since I've already installed Zotero, I'm going to find Zotero. The neat thing about that is that it's always the last thing on my list alphabetically. So it, when you open it, it'll open like this. You can see right there the Zotero window. You need to have it open in order for it to work. If it's not open, it won't work. Lo and behold, right? If the program's not open, it doesn't work. So uh, open Zotero, and again, I apologize, you cannot get Zotero for a Chromebook. As much as I, I love Chromebooks, I love how Chromebooks are so are, are light and they're easy, they're fast, cheap, uh, but Zotero only works on Windows, Linux, or, uh, or um, uh, an Apple device. All right, so you get, that, go, get Zotero there uh, and open it up. Now, I'll show you exactly how this is going to work. You can create, uh, over to the left, you'll see that I have my library. 
and you have full, you can create folders throughout that. Uh, up, uh, up here at the top left, you'll see uh, add a new folder, okay, add a new library, and you can create new libraries, create new folders within those libraries, all right. And when you do that, you can open that up, and let's say I've got, uh, all right, here's my New Testament survey bibliography that I've created. This is actually I made the bibliography for the New Testament survey of uh, syllabus. So when I made the syllabus for New Testament survey, I I uh, put all of those resources into Zotero, and then I just exported that to uh, the syllabus. Okay. Uh, and so here's, uh, this is my New Testament survey bibliography, uh, and you can see that there. All right, let me show you then how this works. And when you open Zotero, you want whatever folder open that you're going to be using. So let's say you're writing a paper for New Testament survey. You want a separate library or a separate folder for New Testament survey. Okay? Then uh, when you uh, open that up, so then you come up here to Amazon. Okay, so click on Amazon. And by the way, there's yet another tidbit for you. If you're using Amazon, which I'm pretty sure you're Alaskan, you're probably using Amazon. When you go to Amazon, type in smile.amazon.com. And when you do that, you'll be able to identify Alaska Bible College as a nonprofit that you're supporting. And every time you make a purchase from Amazon, a small portion, it's pretty small. I don't want to say it's like what 1%, 2%. It's it's pretty small, but <laughs> let's face it, we may, we spend a lot of money on Amazon, right? And every time you make a purchase on Amazon, we get one percent of that. And do you mind disclosing like uh, what was the last time we got it? Oh, I'm sorry. You you could disclose it, but I just called on you as as we're. Uh, I think, in fact, uh, I didn't log into mine. This is actually my my AK Bible one. If I log in as me here and I go to Amazon here, you can see, well, you can see that I was looking for socks last. Um, it says you're supporting a, uh, AK Bible you can see your impact. There you go. I personally have generated since uh, as of August 11th, 2021, I have personally uh, generated $30 for Alaska Bible College. All right. And as of June 2021, Alaska Bible College has received $743. That's just by people using file.amazon.com. Okay. <coughs> That's a cumulative. Over a period of over a period of time, no, no, that says as of like like from the beginning of time up to that as of that date. So that's how much I've got. Okay, all right, no, 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 not since that date, two days ago. <laughs> wow, so, wow, so one per thirty dollars, one percent of thirty. Wow. <laughs> Anyway, so now that you're on Amazon, uh, now that you're on Amazon, you've got your connector ready. Uh, uh, you've installed.